What's going on guys? This is Riggs from Clashing FFS here with the very next video and this is going to be an attack strategy video featuring the Stone Hobo and the way the meta is right now we are seeing more and more Town Hall 9s with anti-air or what we would refer to as anti-air base setups or more often you know the 80s are either on the edges or all four air defenses are basically crammed on one side of the base making it more difficult for an air attack. And something like the Stone Hobo is very, very powerful, maybe even more so now, again, in the meta that we are in in Town Hall 9. So the comp I have up on the screen right now is basically your bread and butter, very, very simple. You have three golems, you have 18 hogs, give or take 18 hogs, uh, eight, eight wizards, um, the wall breakers and the jump spell, we're going to talk about spells next. Um, those usually kind of complement each other. So typically when you have wall breakers on the entry, more often than not, you're only, you're only going to have one jump. So wall breakers on the entry, one jump for the core. And obviously the rage is always used on the kill squad or it's supposed to be used on the kill squad. And when you have two heals, you usually have one heal also on the kill squad to push them even further, keep your golems up a little further, your heroes up a little further, healing up the bowlers. And the second heal spell is normally used on the hogs on the back end. And obviously you have the bowlers in the clan castle, CC in, in the, or your poison in the CC, and then you have your own poison that you're bringing to the battlefield. So let's go ahead and check out just a couple variations real quick. And there are different variations to this attack. Uh, depending, you know, the troops will always complement kind of the spells that you're going to bring. So we'll go ahead and get into that real quick. So basically that army number one is simply uh, the same exact army comp that we just went over. Down there in army number two, uh, it's just a little different. It's a little heavier um, on the wizards, a little stronger kill squad. Usually when you have the two jump, one heal one rage more often than not all those spells are going to be used on your kill squad and you're not gonna have any spells for the hogs because your kill squad is gonna be getting so much about you're gonna be getting so much value and well it says gobs but basically consider it army number three um just a little different again you know just three wall breakers you have a, a jump to get in and possibly out of the core depending on how the base is set up few less wizards uh, you know, again, depending where the air defenses are, it, it's always good to bring a pair of baby drags to really help with that funnel. And if there's no real air targeting defenses, uh, you can get really, really good value from using baby drags. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the three replays uh, that I selected for you guys. And we'll go ahead and break the bases down. All right. So the very first example I have to show you guys, we have can't touch this going to be going in with the stoned hobo going with that three golem entry and you always have to remember with attack strategies is always coupled with base identification you do not want to force any attack on a base more likely and more often than not it will result in a fail so the first thing you have to notice on a base layout like this again especially in this meta that we're in with how overpowering uh, balloons are you see a lot of bases that are being anti-air, an anti-air setup. So you'll notice all these ADs right here are all on the edges. Basically, it's trying to, you know, hinder an attack, uh, an, an air attack. You'll notice that the wizard tower, there's a wizard tower farm right here. Notice the position of the blowers, where the archer queen is. So more, more likely than not, you would not want to attack, not that you can't, but this base would not necessarily call for an air attack. So going ground would more than likely be ideal. So we'll go ahead and just hit play. And we're going to show you guys how he creates a funnel. Just like I mentioned to start off the video with a stone hobo. If you can create a nice funnel and you get your bowlers and heroes inside the core of the base more often than not, it is going to be completely wrecked. So notice right here, he's already dropped down his golem and wizards. Notice he's already cleared out this compartment right here 
and has already started his funnel on this side. Notice he's also doing, as I hit play again, he's doing the exact same thing up at the 12 o'clock area, dropping down his second golem, wizards again just funneling, and it's all about patience. It's all about patience, not getting too far ahead of yourself, because again, you do not want the bowlers to walk. So you'll notice when he dropped his bowlers, the first thing they targeted was this elixir storage. Notice all this trash, all right here, has all been eliminated. So there's no way his bowlers are going to be walking around this base. Notice he does have the jump. The clan castle's already been pulled, went ahead, and he's going to be dropping. Uh, there goes the poison on the CC troops. Uh, notice he's got that little Tesla farm that he's working through. Bowlers are already in the core. And notice he does have 16 hogs in this troop composition. Had a nice rage right in the core. He is already at, just look at this, he is already at 60%. And even up here, even though his golem did walk around the side right here, one of his three golems did walk, he did follow it up with wizards backing it up behind and was still got good value from that golem even though it didn't go in and you can tell it clearly didn't even matter because with those two golems that did go in the center of the base along with the bowlers coupled with the heroes his kill squad was basically at 70 percent destruction before he even dropped his hogs he even had a heal that he didn't that he didn't even use well, he does use it. He drops on the clan castle right there along with the other poison. So, again, it's all about base identification, knowing what exactly the base calls for. And you get the funnel right, just like how Can't Touch This did in this example. You can tell a base can be completely wrecked. Let's go ahead and check out the next example of the Stoned Hobo. Okay, and here is the second example using the stone hobo and first thing i want you guys to look at is the air defense placement this is what i was talking about in the start of the video how the base meta has changed you know you go back six months you did not see bases with air defenses set up like this obviously trying to stop this base from being attacked by air however more often than not base design set up similar to this makes it very open to you know very susceptible to a ground attack so let's go ahead we'll go ahead and hit play let's watch how fez does this notice the position of the enemy archer queen and he's actually going to be coming in at 12 o'clock here as he drops the first golem on the mortar and there goes his baby drag he does have a pair of baby drags to help create this funnel it goes ahead and drops on the second one notice the baby drags he dropped after the archer towers started, started to be tanked by the golems to ensure more value from those baby drags. So notice that baby dragon right there at one o'clock takes out that archer tower. So he's already started a really nice funnel. And I, we'll just pause it real, real quick. And notice all this trash here has been eliminated. Look at where his bowlers are, right in the core. Tesla farm behind the town hall has a nice jump here. And he only brought one jump uh, in this uh, spell comp. He has two heal, one rage. There it goes. All the heroes coming in already took care of the CC. And as that other archer tower went down, he does have one bowler walk. But look at all his heroes are in the core. All the golems tanking everything for those bowlers. So there, go ahead and they just took out that cannon. So basically the whole core of this base was completely gutted and he still has all those bowlers up right there already starting his hog deployment and most of the point defense he got rid of on the entry including that tesla farm and if you look right here he, there's just a can i mean it's just two air defenses left and look down in the troop bar still has five hogs in the bag and one heal so an, another example of how effective, how overpowering Stoned Hobo can be on the right bases, especially give it a try on these bases that have these core wizard towers, that have these air defenses on the on the edges or crammed on one side. It's a very, very powerful attack. Notice he dropped that heel on those three hogs as they encountered the enemy BK, but still has five hogs in the bag, isn't even going to drop them. So again, these anti-air bases, 
give Stone Hobo a try. It's not one of those fly by night, uh, if you will, attacks like how HGHB was, you know, here today, gone tomorrow. This attack is still effective and even more so now in the current meta of the game. Let's go ahead and check out the third example using Stone Hobo. Okay, and this is the third and final example I have to show you guys using Stone Hobo and how effective it can be. And remember, it always comes down to base identification and also picking the correct entry point. So if you look, if you look at the back end of this base where uh, Gooves would be sending in his hogs, notice there's no spot on that whole back end where a giant bomb or let alone a double giant bomb could fit. The only place that would be susceptible would be right here by, you know, just to the left of the queen chamber in this, this little wizard tower compartment. There is a spot for a bomb there. But I mean, when you really think about it, how often do you see giant bombs next to the queen? Not very often. So picking an entry, you know, around four or five o'clock, this would absolutely be ideal Focusing on what the back end of the base looks like knowing that there's no giant bombs nothing as hogs have to work uh, You know are gonna have to encounter um, So he's starting off with his two golems and He did drop that minion uh, just to help with that funnel, but it did get zapped by that Tesla farm So he goes ahead and drops down his golem followed up by four wizards over at three o'clock and right here again He's just creating a nice tight funnel and notice he has no wall breakers and, but he did go with a double jump to get through that compact core right there. So, and if you look over here at three o'clock, um, that golem does walk into that farm, but he does have a pair of wizards behind it just to help and still get good value from that golem over there. Has everything uh, coming in here, bowlers rushing in, CC coming out, drops both poisons on it. And you'll see he's going to be using all of his spells on the kill squad. So he had both jumps, had the rage down. There goes the heal, healing up those bowlers, uh, giving the golems a little bit more life. Archer Queen just sniping defenses. There goes a, a single bomb pops. And he's just dropping a couple hogs, even over at 9 o'clock where the bomb tower is. He only dropped a pair of hogs. He didn't want to send in six hogs to uh, that bomb tower. So I'd rather have two go, you know, two get damaged instead of six because it has that splash damage. Notice he does still have three hogs. Um... Just in case, as his Archer Queen is taking out these last defenses, there was, in fact, a giant bomb next to the Queen Chamber. But he still had three hogs in the bag, pops the ability, and the Archer Queen takes out that last enemy defense, which was that Archer Tower, and it's all cleanup. So he did save those three hogs just in case something happened. Archer Queen got the final defense, and he's basically going to be using those other three hogs for cleanup. Even his king survived. He still has bowlers, even has a, a, a loon that he brought just in case. So again, there is a lot of versatility with this attack. It, again, it just comes down to identifying the base and knowing what the base calls for. So Gooves completely smashed that one. So awesome job to M Gooves on that one and showing how versatile and how overpowering this attack can be. All right, well, that is going to do it for this attack strategy video featuring the Stoned Hobo. And I just really wanted to highlight that, I mean, this attack has been around for a very long time. And it is still very viable and still very much a part of this meta. More so now than ever because of how many bases we're coming across that are set up with this quote-unquote anti-air you know, style bases. So just really wanted to highlight that. I hope you guys thought the replays and the, ba the base breakdowns was, was helpful. If you guys thought it was, make sure you guys hit that like button. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We have all kinds of stuff going on. I mean, we just had a potluck spin. We were pinning, uh, spinning cruiserweight and we match Reddit Omega. So please stay tuned for that war recap video. It is gonna be absolutely an epic war. It's gonna be a lot of fun. A lot, the guys are all pumped about it. So again, make sure you stay tuned for that. And leave any suggestions or comments in the in the comment section down below. Let me know if there's any attack strategies you guys like to see featured on the channel. You know, I'd, I'd love to hear uh, you know your guys's comments. So make sure you do that. 
and I appreciate all your guys' support that you guys have had. We just hit, it might not sound like a lot, it's, it's, it might not be a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to me. We just hit 100 subscribers, so again, thank you for the support you guys are showing to the channel, to the clan, you know, very, very much appreciated, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.